Welcome again to All Strut No Fret One Shots, where the premise is that I drink a single shot and then I plough my way through the entire plot of an early modern play in one shot, no cuts, no edits. Today the drink is port, which is not usually done in a shot, so I'm hoping I'm not going to regret this. And the play, a little bit early for Halloween, but it might serve for that, is the Decker, Rowley and Ford play The Witch of Edmonton. Now there really was a, uh, an alleged Witch of Edmonton, Mother Sawyer, who was executed in 1621, which is when the play was written. At that time, Edmonton nowadays, we would simply think of as North London, but back then it was a whole separate borough, a whole separate village. And um, these plays at this time really like to tap into what were popular, exciting court cases or scandals that were going on at the time. Hence, The Witch of Edmonton, uh, I am going to get this down me and then I'm going to tell you about Mother Sawyer. Mm. Sticky and delicious, but probably not meant to be taken. <laughs> in one go quite like that. Okay, The Witch of Edmonton. Uh, the play is mostly, sadly, not about The Witch of Edmonton, although the more interesting bits are. There are two plots running in it, and I might just tell them to you separately because they don't interact very much at all. The, the main sort of core plot is a kind of domestic middle-class tragedy attached to a character called Frank Thornley, who was an apprentice. Now, Frank has knocked up and married a maid in the household of the master that he's bound to, a girl called Winifred. She's really sweet. She cries for most of the play. Uh, she adores Frank. And Frank, being an apprentice, is not supposed to marry anyone without the permission of his master and, of course, his father. So they're keeping their marriage under wraps for now. Now, First thing that happens is his master finds out and he's actually really down with this because he was boinking Winifred before Frank was and he thinks this is a great way for him to continue to do so uh, indefinitely but Winifred puts him straight on that right away. No, she's in love with Frank, she's having Frank's baby, she's married to Frank now and she from now on will be a good wife and those days are behind her. So that's all looking pretty positive so far. However, of course, there's a complication and it comes in the form of Frank's father, who tells Frank that he is deeply in debt and the only way the family can be saved is if Frank marries this entirely different girl, Susan, Susan Carter, uh, who has a father referred to in the play as Old Carter and also a sister, Catherine. Now, Susan's an absolutely delightful girl too. And I am led to the conclusion that Frank is a really good looking young man because there is no way that he would otherwise get away with all the shaganaganery that he gets on with in this play because he marries Susan. So now he has a problem. He has two wives, uh, one genuine but secret and one public but bigamous. Now to get himself out of this awkward situation, he eventually ends up stabbing Susan to death in the woods and uh, trying to lay the blame on a couple of local gallants, uh, one of whom Susan's sister Catherine really liked, but uh, she find, when she hears that the man was involved with murdering her sister, she's like, no, he, he's terrible and I renounce him and he must be taken to prison. So the innocent young men are taken to prison. Uh, it looks as if Frank's got away with it, but the ghost of his utterly blameless and really sweet dead wife haunts him. I, I should have just taken a moment to say there's this beautiful scene where Winifred, dressed as a boy, I don't know how far along she was that allowed that to happen, but um, dressed as a page to her husband, is going away with him and Susan and uh, Win has this conversation with Winifred, who she thinks is her husband's page, where Winifred promises to look after him and make sure that he doesn't look at another girl and that he doesn't um, flirt or carouse or, uh, yeah, or fall by the wayside. And, 
And Susan's really grateful. She's touchingly grateful about how well this page is going to look after her husband, poor sap. Uh, so poor old Susan ends up stabbed in a ditch. Uh, Frank is tormented by her ghost and by the knowledge of his guilt, ends up confessing to his actual wife, Winifred. Winifred immediately spills the beans to Catherine, Susan's sister, and, uh, and Susan's father. And Frank, confronted with all these people who know exactly what he did, realises he can't get away with it anymore, confesses the, uh, the two gallants who were... Uh, wrongfully accused are released and uh, one of the one that Catherine likes ends up back with her and they forgive each other and all is well on, on that front. Uh, Frank goes off to execution. He's very contrite so everyone says oh I'm surprised to find that I am moved and saddened by this and they all promise and this is a good thing they all promise that they're going to look after Winifred properly and she's not going to be abandoned or uh, or left in poverty or anything like that. They're all going to take care of her like a daughter. So kind of a semi-happy ending there for everyone except Susan. Now running parallel to this, you're probably wondering what's happened to Mother Sawyer, the Witch of Edmonton in all this? Well, her story really just involves everyone being so awful to her. And this goes all the way up to actually just beating her. It's like, oh, here's an old woman who uh, we, are uncomfortable around so we're going to claim that she's a witch and therefore that makes this okay for us to hit her and eventually she gets so frustrated with being called a witch constantly and accused of witchcraft that she actually does say well all right i i would be up for that possibility were it to arise and this is when the really theatrically interesting thing happens because uh her selling herself to the devil comes in the form of her dog. She has a dog called Tom and uh, a devil sort of takes over Thomas the dog and makes an agreement with her to be her familiar and to do her bidding. So we would really just from a, a historic theatrical point of view would so love to know how the role of dog was performed. How was the character costumed? Were they um, looking just symbolically like a dog? Did they have a mask? Did they have a full body costume? Were they on all fours? We, we, we don't know how it was performed and it would be fascinating because dog has a really prominent role. Some of the time he is read by other people in the room simply as a dog and he's running around going woof woof. Other times he speaks and has many lines and many things to say to Mother Sawyer. So he says, well, I can't kill anyone for you but I can perform other magics mostly to, mostly to annoy people, just to do mean things like make traditional fairy things, like make the butter not come, uh, leave knots in horses' manes, uh, make people ill, all, all that kind of thing. And he does that for a while, particularly Mother Sawyer makes an agreement with a young chap called Young Cuddy Banks. And all that goes on there is Cuddy wants to seduce this girl and uh, the dog says to him that he will help but instead all he does is bring in another spirit who masquerades as the girl and just ends up leading Cuddy Banks into a river and nearly drowning him so he gets nothing out of this and frankly in the end neither does Mother Sawyer because this all culminates in the dog getting to the point where he says well you're no use to us anymore. Everyone knows you're a witch. Everyone's calling you a witch. And any minute now, they're going to come along and execute you for that. So you're on your own now and, uh, and abandons her. And so at the last time we see Mother Sawyer, she, she's accused of, uh, of bewitch briefly of bewitching Frank to get him to stab Susan because they say, uh, surely he couldn't have done such a thing unless a devil was in him. And she says, well, that's true, but not all the devils are mine. So points to her for being onto that. Um, so she just basically says, yes, I, I will confess, I will repent my sins, uh, but I will say to everyone that it's, it's not worth it. And it really wasn't because the dog gave her nothing. And uh, the, the dog just made everything 
more miserable for everyone. And so Mother Sawyer is carted off to execution. The real Mother Sawyer was hanged in 1621 when the play was uh, performed shortly after that. And so at the end of the play, the moral of the story, fairly conventionally, is uh, don't truck with the devil because, not necessarily just because it's evil, but because you're never going to get the kind of payback that you're really looking for. And revenge rarely brings the catharsis that we think it will.